You know, Cube, Cube my, my, my name fell out of Cube's mouth more than anybody. Okay. Cube always give me my props. Okay. He just did an uh, interview recently, and in, uh, in the interview, I can't, in fact, I got a copy of the interview. He said, It shows the person that he is. Lonzo Williams uh, don't get the respect he deserves you know, for here on the West Coast, he looked out for everybody. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gonna talk. Now, you, you, you got these, these guys, you got a studio in your house. A studio in my house. And this is where this movie where they depict an easy rapping but can't really rap. Can't rap a gift if he gave That was gold. in your house. Yes. Marcel. Hey, just say the words, all right? What does that even mean? Man, just say the shit with me, all right? Cruising. Cruising. But they didn't, I don't, they don't think they said that they in the movie. They didn't say that in my, they didn't, no, 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 They no. didn't say that in the movie. No, they didn't. So when these kids are at your house, you put a studio together, you, did you know that they had talent to make music or was it something you trained them on or who was dealing with the, the, the engineering and all this stuff? It was different back then. So what type of studio was this? And who was paying for it? It's his studio. He got I the know, money. but who paid? American Express. <laughs> <laughs> me and Amer I, American Express loaned me the money and I paid him back. Okay? <laughs> that's how this shit got, that's how it got done. Um, it's a backstory to that. Okay. Okay. Backstory is where I live at right now, when I was a youngster, my daddy had a, my daddy always had a, he was a hustler. Mm -hmm. he, but his hustle was cutting lines, cutting trees okay. from star sprinkler systems. So I work with my dad. Mm -hmm. So the neighborhood I live in right now is one of our main neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. Etta James, the blues singer, yeah. lived in my neighborhood. Something told me it was over. Wow, her, really? We cut her line on a regular basis. And you spoke to her? I know, like, like I'm talking to you. Okay, we're going to get to that later okay. on. Keep going. We're kicking it, like I'm kicking it with you. My brother became her, one of her road managers, one of her roadies, whatever you want to call it. But after my, after my mother passed, and Etta was always like a distant mentor to me in the music business. Mm. Wow. Okay? Watch out for this. Watch out for that. Watch that's out for this. Good. Don't let them give you nothing. Don't let them smoke nothing that shit that you saw. Them, that they hit it first. That kind of shit, okay? You know, mm -hmm. she was, she had, she had a drug, Street, drug, yeah, drug yeah, issues. Yeah, yeah. And... When I got my CBS deal, or some, my Sony deal, Wrecking Crew got a Sony deal. Wow. Wrecking yeah. Crew I, and, and, uh, stereo, and Stereo Crew got a Sony deal. And it told my brother, tell Alonzo, Johnny Otis, about to sell his house. Well, Johnny Otis, another big time blues singer, had just did the uh, Back to the Future, 1985, mm. 86. Wow. He got a shitload of money. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So he left like Jay Clappin. He moved to the hills of Altadena, left the house. Vacant. Mm. Wasn't even no for sale sign on the pad when I bought it. Didn't sell it, wow. nothing. It wasn't no for sale sign on it. How much you pay for that? $125,000. Nice. No. $125,000. Nice. That was a lot of money back then. Yes, sir. Mm, yes, my house was $600 when I first. My daddy said, $600? Can you make this, son? I'm like, yeah, dad, I think I can. My daddy house was $185. And it came with the studio. Came with the studio. That's why I bought it. That's I was, going, I was either going to buy Dudos. So if there was no for sale sign, you just went up to him and said, hey, I want to buy your house? No, my partner, one of my best friends, Ralph Hope, I got to give him his plug, uh, the real estate guy. Mm -hmm. I said, man, there's a house over here on, uh, by Edda James, might be up for sale. Could you check? He, he ran the, the address, found out, called the people up. You want to sell it? They said, yeah. Wow. So when you get in this house now, you, you do drain them come immediately? No, it was already with me. We was so already y'all came I, I, over there. I had another house before then. Oh, so you was over there dealing with I music. I had a house over there. already. I had a I had a uh, smaller house. And you had a studio in that. And that, that house. That's yeah, wait, let me stop right quick. Cause you telling me you took these boys over. Have you talked to Dre since all this happened? Not, they're not not up close to personal. No. No more. This is where the game go. I just wanted to see. You know, I ask these crazy questions, but they really real questions need to be asked. Like. For you to do all this with them and spend all this time with them, you would think that that would be some type of bond. You would think uh, respect. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, Cube. Cube. My, my my name fell out of Cube's mouth more than anybody. Okay. Cube always give me my props. Okay. He just did an uh, interview recently, and in, uh, in the interview, I kept, in fact, I got a copy of the interview. He said it shows the person that he is. Lonzo Williams uh, don't get the respect he deserves. You know, for here on the West Coast, because he looked out for everybody. Wow. How do, how do you feel when you hear that? I love it. Because it solidifies what uh, it solidifies, solidifies my position in West Coast hip hop coming from somebody with the, of his magnitude. Mm -hmm. Okay, at first, I used, to, I used to have a debate. I used to um, get into it with people because people uh, were these guys gangsters. They said no, nah, they wasn't gangsters. But 
they weren't Cube is not a gang banger, but he's probably the most gangster cat of all of them. Why you say that? Cube walked away from NWA because he wasn't getting treated right. Right. Went solo. Mm -hmm. in the, in the height of their shit. Yeah. Went solo. I remember. Okay. Stepped out on faith and hope. Okay. Killed. Came up with a killer album. Shortly after that, Cube started making movies. Okay. Did you knew that he had all of this in him Cube when you met him? Cube was always talented, but understand, I'm 12 years older than Cube. Right. So I'm 20, I'm 27, 28. He's 15, 16. I hear him, but I ain't, I ain't hearing him. You ain't paying I ain't attention because he a kid. He a kid. Kids got all kind of ideas and plans. Okay. Well, you know, so the first time you actually knew that he was going to be somebody is when he made that move. When and I started, no, 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 and I, and I, and I looked at all the moves he was making. Every time he made one move, when he when they introduced him into the movie business as an actor, I'm gonna start making my own movies. I didn't conquer the movie again. I got that boy got three franchises. Yeah, he had three franchises, three different movies from three different situations that all under his under his umbrella. Mm -hmm. Then he says, you know what? Mm, I'm gonna try sports. I'm gonna start some start some sports shit. Got the three on three. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If that ain't no gangster shit, my name ain't Lonzo. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gon' talk.